Okay, trig substitutions. Um, so the way the book presents them, the way they were presented in class, um, it it seems a little bit more uh, about memorizing three different ways to approach the problem, but um, my approach is very similar to the ones that I have posted in physics videos. Um, uh, but let's take a look at it more uh, from a formal calculus point of view. What we have here are types of integrals that are unsolvable using the methods that we've that we've learned so far. Um, but if you look at them, you'll notice that uh, we have the square root of two squared numbers, and uh, that's very similar to the Pythagorean identity, right? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so the idea is that, uh, let's not forget that this is the relation of the three sides of a triangle to one another. Um, so I would posit that it might be more helpful if you uh, draw the triangle at the beginning. And if you do that, you won't even have to memorize the three substitutions that you need to do because they'll come, they'll arise naturally from the triangle. Um, let's take this integral, which is one of the problems from the homework. 36 minus x squared. And I'll rewrite it in the three different forms. Here we have x squared over here. Here there's a plus sign in front of it. And here we have the x squared at the beginning. Okay, so the approach would be to draw the triangle first. How could we possibly get this from the Pythagorean identity? There's only one way, right? We have to move one of these terms over to the other side. So we get c squared minus b squared, or c squared minus a squared, equals b squared. And so then the square root of b of c squared minus a squared will equal b, right? I move this over, I could say something like this. b equals the square root of c squared minus a squared. So what does that tell you about these two pieces of data? Well, it gives us everything that we need to lay out the triangle, right? Let's draw the triangle and we'll fill in the blanks. This is c squared. That means it has to be the hypotenuse, right? c minus a equaled b. So the square root of 36 is the hypotenuse. And then we have x squared, which is one of the sides. So x is one of the sides. And then we end up with the square root of 36 minus x squared for the other side. If we came over to this other triangle, 36 plus x squared, well, how do I get a plus in this equation? Only way to do it is to leave the equation just as it is, right? a squared plus b squared. So what are these two numbers now? Well, now they're the sides of the triangle, right? So we get a triangle like this. Six, x, and the square root of those two things squared. And then for the last one, x squared minus 36. How do we get that? Okay, it's the same thing. There's only one way to get a minus sign in this equation bring one of the sides over, which means that because the x squared is the positive number, that's the c in the triangle. 
to the hypotenuse. So we get x and we get 6 and we get the square root of x squared minus 36. Okay, so from these three triangles, I now suggest that you grab the identities. I don't need to memorize them. They fall right out of it. Look at this. 36 minus x squared. Here's our triangle. I'll put theta here. I don't really know where theta needs to be. It could be up here. could be down here. But I'm going to remember roughly what the um, identities are. I, I'm going to work with sine. I'm going to work with the tangent. And I'm going to work with the secant. Okay. I could probably do this with the cosine as well. I haven't bothered to try, but um, all I remember is that uh, is those three things. And by looking at this triangle, I'm going to what I'm trying to do is rewrite this equation without this thing in it. So if I want to rewrite the equation, what I want to do is get rid of 6, because remember this is dx. I want to rewrite this equation in terms of theta. So immediately that tells me I'm dealing with trigonometry. And um, I can get the x by itself if I could write an equation that had x somewhere in it and x nowhere else in the equation. Well, how do I do that? I've got x. I've got 6, and I've got this thing that looks ugly, and I don't want to deal with it. So I'm going to put x over 6. I'm going to put opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of theta equals x over 6. That's it. That's my substitution. But all, to set it up, all we're going to do is move the 6 over to the other side, and that's it. We now have redefined x without, we have x on one side, and then it equals something that only has theta on the other side. So I just take the derivative of x with respect to theta, and I'm going to get 6 cosine theta d theta. That's it. So now I have my d theta that I wanted, and I'm, I have x, so wherever I see x in my equation, I'll put this in. Wherever I see d theta, I'm sorry, dx, I'm going to put this in. And because I have that d theta in there, I've rewritten the equation in terms of d theta. Let's look at the next one. 36 plus x squared. It's uh, plus x squared. It's the same, same problem. What I want to do is get x all by itself in the equation so that I can take the derivative of it. That's what a substitution is, right? Let's let x equal something and then take the derivative of it. So I don't want to deal with this nasty equation up here. We've already seen that we can't solve it. So we have opposite and adjacent. Well, that's the tangent. Multiply it by 6. There it is. There's our substitution. The derivative of that with respect to theta. And there you go. So for whatever equation we, uh, for wherever we see x in the equation, we'll plug in our tangent theta, or I'm sorry, our 6 tangent theta. And wherever we see the dx, we'll plug in this and then we'll be able to solve it. And I'll show that in another video. Let's take a look at the last one. x squared minus 36. And this one can sometimes be a little bit trickier. I can't even remember if I've set it up right just looking at it, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll determine that right now. The question is going to be which theta do I want to use? Remember, we're just creating a triangle to help us solve the problem. So is it that theta or is it this theta? Well, I'm going to exploit the other, the trig, the Pythagorean identity in terms of trigonometry, right? Where we have sine squared 
plus cosine squared equals 1. And I can divide the entire thing by sine or cosine. We'll do cosine. And I just typically remember one of these, right? Uh, although, uh, I should be able to do it the other way. Equals 1 over cosine squared. So we get this is secant squared theta equals sine over cosine. We get tangent squared. Cosine over cosine plus 1. And I just remember how to solve this. Because I, you know, give me two or three days, I'm going to forget where the plus and the minus sign goes. But if I can set this scenario up, then I'll get this equation and I can work from that. So the reason why we're doing, why we're uh, solving this is because we remember from doing trigonometric integrals a week or two ago that working with the secant and the tangent is really easy. So um, so if I can, I want to use secant or tangent. And that's what's going to tell me which angle to work from. So 6 over x uh, is opposite over adjacent if I use this angle. So I'm going to use this angle right here and work with cosine because that's going to give me the secant, right? So um, theta, the cosine, is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. I could set that up if I wanted to. And you'll see that it, we get a little problem. 6 over x. I want to isolate x. I don't really get a problem. I'm just going to end up rewriting the equation. And it's going to end up turning into the secant. So I'm just going to start with the secant, which is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So now I can say 6 secant theta is equal to x. There you go. I've got x on one side, I've got the secant on the other side. I could take the derivative and get 6 secant tangent is equal to dx. Oops, and we'll put our d theta there. So now I know that I can take this equation, and wherever I see x, I'll replace it with 6 secant theta. And wherever I see the dx, I'm going to replace it with this and rewrite the equation in terms of d theta. All right. Um, in the next video, I'll actually use this method to solve a problem um, that's sort of a mid-level complicated problem. All right, let's try and solve this problem using the method that I described in the last video of drawing the triangle from the beginning. So this looks a little convoluted, but it'll all straighten itself out in the end. We have a 1 plus 4x squared in here. And I know from looking at my Pythagorean identity that there's only one way to have a plus sign. It means that what we're talking about, we have a squared, we have 1 squared plus 2x squared equals c. So this is the hypotenuse. Has to be. Because um, we're, remember too that this is squ uh, the square root cubed. Right? The root to the power. So even though it's not written expressly as a square root, in fact, it's raised to a power. I'm not really going to be daunted by that. I'm just going to draw the triangle and recognize that the math book is going to give us problems that have to work out. Okay, So this side will be 1 plus 4x squared. And the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4x squared is 2x. So that's our triangle. And now I want to figure out a way to rewrite dx in terms of d theta and x in terms of theta. 
So I'm going to, just by looking at this triangle, I'm really only given one option, right? I can use, I have this, the opposite, and the adjacent. So I'm going to do the tangent. Tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. So 1 half tangent theta is equal to x. And the derivative of x with respect to theta is 1 half secant squared theta d theta. So now I'm going to take these two things and plug them in. Wherever I see the x and the dx, I'll replace them. So what do I get? I get the dx, I get 1 half secant squared theta d theta. And downstairs, I get, um, and I'll rewrite this so that it looks closer to the form that we're kind of expecting to see. This is the 3 halves power, right? Square root to the third power of 1 plus 4 times x times x squared, right? What's x? It's 1 half tangent theta. So x squared would be 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth. So the 4 cancels. So we get tangent squared theta. Okay. So then I've got uh, I'm going to pull the 1 half out. Secant theta d theta over 1 plus tangent squared, but remember the I Pythagorean identity. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And why am I doing that? Well, because the only way to get this thing cleared up is to get rid of the square root. So I can just take a single term and raise it to the third power. Well, if I divide everything through by cosine squared, I'm going to remember that this is the secant and it equals 1 plus tangent squared. So 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. A number squared and square rooted. That undoes it, right? So I get secant cubed. Beautiful. Because when I look at this, those cancel with those, and I get 1 over secant. But 1 over secant is the inverse of the cosine. So I end up with 1 half the, inter uh, the integral of cosine theta d theta, which is 1 half sine theta. plus c. Now remember, because I wrote the equation originally in terms of x, I need to get back to x. Well, remember, we're supposed to draw the triangle. Well, isn't that convenient? We already have the triangle. We've already defined which, which side or which angle is theta, figured it all out already. So now all we need to do is figure out what is the sine of theta. The sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, 2x over 1 plus 4x squared. OK, so I've got 2x over 
the square root of 1 plus 4x squared times this 1 half, of course, which means that these cancel. And so I get x over the square root of 1 plus 4x squared plus c. That's your answer.